Hey class, this is the review on uh, rocks that we have, on igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. So let's get started with biotite granite. Uh, biotite granite, uh, the, the dark flecks in here are biotite, which is um, very similar to muscovite, which you know well, as the white flaky mineral. The, the only difference between, really, the only visual difference between biotite and muscovite is that biotite is black, whereas muscovite is uh, clear or whitish. Um, what makes this granite is the fact that in addition to the biotite, it's also got these little flakes of potassium feldspar, which are very pale pink, and there's also can be some white feldspar in there as well, but also there's a lot of white quartz in here. Uh, this is a hard felsic rock, felsic meaning that it has a very high silica content. Um, it's all, because it also has the feldspar and the quartz in there, it's very hard, and you can easily scratch a glass plate with it. Um, so this is an intrusive... Uh, igneous rock. It's got these big minerals here, meaning that it cooled deep inside Earth, where it uh, took a long time to cool off, and so the minerals had a lot of time to form uh, from the melt. Moving on to hornblende cyanite. It's similar to granite, except that the black in here, instead of being biotite, uh, is hornblende, which, uh, are the, remember, are those short, black, stubby um, minerals that we have, and you've seen one of the mineral samples from the uh, mineral kit in here. Uh, the white in here is actually mostly feldspar instead of quartz, but this will still easily scratch a glass plate. This is also an intrusive igneous rock, and it's therefore felsic, although it's not quite as felsic. It's more, maybe a tad more intermediate um, than granite, simply because it, it lacks a lot of quartz. <clears throat> Moving on down, we've got this uh, um, dark igneous rock called gabbro. Um, it's got these fairly large grains in there of pyroxene and some olivine and maybe some pyroxene in there. And this is also an intrusive igneous rock that's cooled at depth where the minerals had time to grow nice and big. And it is chemically and mineralogically identical to basalt, which is the kind of lava coming out of Hawaii. It's what the Hawaiian Islands are made out of. Basalt is also what the ocean basins are made out of, where we've got those spreading centers where the tectonic plates are formed, basically, uh, in the mid-Atlantic. Um, the ocean basins are made out of basalt, as is a lot of the moon and Mars. Basalt is a very common rock made up of... And it's, uh, it's felsic, meaning it's got a relatively low um, uh, silica content, around 50%. This is a mafic rock compared to our felsic and inter intermediate previous rocks. Okay. This is obsidian. Now, unlike um, its lighter colored um, felsic cousins, this is also a felsic rock because it's high in silica. It's very high in silica because it's basically glass, and windows are basically pure silica, window glasses, and you can see this conchoidal fracture along this. Um, this will scratch glass, although it might crumble a little bit because this is glass. Um, your text In your textbook and in the PowerPoint slides, sometimes you can see red stripes in obsidian, but that's just chemical impurities. Okay, so you remember granite. Well, this is granite is an intrusive igneous rock, and this is granite's extrusive cousin, rhyolite. The exact same composition. It's got potassium feldspar, um, it's, got, it's got quartz, and it's got... Um, biotite in there, but they're all really fine-grained. This cooled at the surface from a melt uh, from the lava, and so it cooled really fast, and so the minerals didn't have time to get very big. It's a light-colored felsic rock, just like granite. Okay, that's it for our igneous rocks. Uh, moving on to sedimentary rocks, here's gravel. Kind of self-explanatory. Um, these are rounded these are rounded, they've been transported either in aeolian, meaning air, or fluvial, meaning water systems, to have the sharp bumps uh, broken up, or, or rounded off. When you get a lot of gravel uh, cementing together, <clears throat> um, usually through uh, like calcite-laden waters kind of trickling through there, depositing their load of calcite there, you get this cemented rock called conglomerate, which is, as it sounds, it's a conglomerate of a lot of different rocks. You can see uh, a lot of different rocks in there. So this is not an igneous rock. This has large grains in it, large clasts in this case, uh, but we do not say, but this did not cool from a melt. I, when I've taught this in the past, people say, oh, you know, conglomerate is this intrusive igneous rock because it's got big grains in there. No, it didn't cool from a melt. 
It's got big clasts, previously existing rocks, uh, that have been cemented together. Okay, moving on to uh, red sandstone. You can actually look at this with a magnifying glass or a hand lens, and you can see the little, it just, it looks like beach sand in here. I mean, if you can hold up a pile of sand and look at it, you, you can see that in here, except in this case, they're all stuck together in a rock. And what makes it red is the fact that there's some hematite or some iron-bearing mineral and iron cement in here holding this together. Um, and this will scratch glass as well because sand is mostly quartz, usually. And so this is, um, there's a lot of quartz in here, and so this will scratch glass. This is argillaceous sandstone. It has a lot of clay in there. Um, it looks dirtier than the other sandstone, or than the other sandstone. Um, so this is when you have a lot of clay mixed in with the sand. This is argillaceous uh, shale. You can, if you look at the side here, you can see how it's f it's fissile. In other words, you can you can crumble it apart easily. It's a soft rock. It comes in these layers, uh, and there's a lot of clay in this. And clay is an important mineral in shales. Clay minerals are like mica in that in clay, the silicate uh, is arranged in the sheet. So you get these, this perfect sheet-like cleavage there. And the clay individual, very small clay minerals, are very flat and sheet-like. And they can get arranged in flat sheets in shale and so on. Okay, moving on to uh, limestone. This is a, limestone can look like a lot of things. This happens to be dolomitic limestone. Just remember that it's limestone. This fizzes in acid. It's mostly made out of uh, calcite, which is calcium carbonate. Um, this will fizz in acid, uh, vinegar, or uh, hydrochloric acid. Um, yeah, and um, that's all I want to say about that. Here we have chert. Chert... Um, Chert is usually formed in the oceans, where you get a lot of silica, <clears throat> the silicious ooze. It's literally called silicious ooze that, that uh, gets deposited in very deep ocean environments. And on Earth, a lot of uh, chert is formed from the conglomeration. First, you dissolve away the um, silica shells of a lot of microscopic marine organisms uh, called diatoms, and those collect on the bottom of the ocean, and they eventually get compacted into chert. Uh, if you... If you take chert and you rub it together on smell a vision, it smells smoky. Which is no surprise because that's what we ha use flint lighters. That's what flint lighters use in there. Next up, we have uh, a type of limestone called coquina, C O Q U I N A. And coquina is made up of the cement cementation together of a lot of uh, seashells. And you can see outcrops of this at the beach sometimes. And then, of course, this will fizz in acid. Um, what marine, a lot of marine organisms do, including clams and oysters and whatnot, is they take uh, the calcium carbonate out of the ocean that's just dissolved in the seawater, and they use it to make shells around their bodies. Um, next up in our sedimentary rocks is bituminous coal. Bituminous coal can be kind of shiny, but also kind of dull. It, of course, burns. It fuels a lot of our economy and our electricity. Um, it's mined out of the ground, it's, um, as opposed to mining it out of the air, I suppose. And, uh, it's the compaction together of a lot of dead plant matter, or dead, uh, mostly dead plant matter, uh, grasses and leaves and twigs and whatnot. They get compressed and heated over time until you're left with this black carbon rock. Okay, where are we up to? Tuminous coal, slate. Okay, you take shale, with all that clay in there, and you heat it, and you compact it, you squeeze it so that the, all the clay minerals line up together better, and you come up with shale. And shale looks harder. It sounds different if you drop it on the table. Well, it doesn't sound different here. Forget that. Sometimes shale makes more of a clinky noise. If you tap it, it sounds more like tink, 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 as opposed to shale, which is more of a thud, thud, thud. So this is uh, slate. Of course, it's what we often make chalkboards out of. Uh, if we metamorphose... Uh, limestone, made out of calcite, calcium carbonate, we get marble. Sometimes marble could be sparkly like this, but also mar marble can also be swirly. Limestone, can look, mar limestone and marble can look like a lot of things. This should also fizz in acid, because it's, it's heated and compressed uh, uh, limestone. 
So if we take uh, quartz sandstone uh, and we, or you know, red sandstone or whatever, and we heat it and compress it, we end up with quartzite, where we haven't melted it, but we've gotten it hot and we've allowed the grains to kind of ooze and mush into each other. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example from cooking. Nothing's coming to mind. I guess it's like if you took a bunch of marshmallows and you microwaved them and you mushed them together, they would kind of like ooze into each other and it's hard to tell where one marshmallow stops and another marshmallow be, uh, begins. Same idea with the quartz grains here. The quartz grains have been, or the sand grains, which are usually made out of quartz, have been kind of mushed and fused together. And this, since it's mostly made out of quartz, since it's mostly sand is mostly quartz, will scratch glass. Okay, next up we have mica schist, which is another metamorphic rock. Uh, this tends to be formed um, where a lot of sedimentary rock has been really hard, com uh, tightly compressed and heated. Um, this, this usually happens where um, uh, you have metamorphism happening where you have an oce oceanic tectonic plate and a continental tectonic plate coming together, and the tectonic plate has a lot of built-up um, sediment uh, at the, in the ocean. And so you can see there's a lot of uh, flat planar features in here because this has a lot of uh, mica in it, which is, of course, mica uh, includes both muscovite and biotite, which are flat, flaky, platy minerals. This is very common in Pennsylvania uh, from the Appalachian Mountains, which, um, little side note, Appalachian Mountains formed back in the day when, when Pangaea was actually being assembled, when proto-North America and proto-Europe rammed and smushed into each other it formed the Appalachian Mountains. And what happened was a, lo was a lot of the marine sediment that was off the coast of proto-North America got metamorphosed into schist. And now a lot of buildings in the area are made out of this stuff, and it's a very pretty rock, but also flakes apart a lot. Another metamorphic rock is called gneiss, G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. The G is silent. It's not gneiss. I'll make fun of you if you say gneiss. Um, and on the it can kind of look like granite. In fact, gneiss is actually metamorphosed granite. But you've got heat and pressure, pressing on it, and you can get a nice is characteristic with uh, is characterized uh, by these stripes in it. So you can see how these this is either biotite or some kind of hornblende or amphibole in here that then got compressed and kind of got uh, chemically altered maybe a bit into these long stripes. And finally, I don't know why Dr. Huber put this on the chart, but there's also graphite, which we know from our mineral class. You can it's a really soft, shiny, silvery rock that you can draw with. So. And again, I recommend that you watch this video a few times and then watch it with the sound off and see if you can identify the rocks. All right, see you later.